Hello and welcome to Why Media Political Sensex. I am your host, Ramona Singh, coming live every day from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. for Why Media. And today was the first day of the election campaign that's been launched by all the uh, party leaders heading to an election day on, Jan on June 2nd, where Ontarians will choose a new premier or maybe re-elect the old premier, uh, Doug Ford. And today was uh, like no other, Why Media was right on the ground and doing interviews and coverage. And uh, we were the first to do an exclusive interview with Andrew Horvath, the NDP leader, who was in Mississauga as her first campaign stop. She talked about her priorities for her party and what she'd like to accomplish. And I asked her some questions about uh, this election, which she finds that's different from the previous one and how she's going to differentiate herself from from the liberals who may steal their ideas that we've seen in the past of whether it's a different level of government the NDP put out their own platform policies and the liberals sound very similar to it so for the voters how can they differentiate between the two parties what is her plan to become premier and more on that interview right now everyday life for, for people. Everyday people can't afford everyday life anymore. Uh, we, we see the cost of housing to the point where you can't rent or afford to buy a house. Uh, and, and that's uh, one of the basics. Our healthcare system is falling apart. Uh, and people have a lot of um, stress. And so they have a lot of mental health needs that need to be addressed. Uh, so there are many, many pieces uh, that, um, you know, that people want to see fixed. And that's what this campaign is about, to actually give people hope that, that we can fix the things that are most important to them, that matter most to them. There was a news story that came out just a few days ago. It's actually heartbreaking. There's a 31-year-old female who's in a wheelchair. She's been diagnosed with MS. She was previously a makeup artist, and she's been looking for affordable rent, like affordable housing to rent outside of the city because she's uh, she's allergic to the chemicals that sent her into shock and uh, potentially seizures. And her friends were able to have a GoFundMe page to be able to raise some money and uh, donations and put her in a hospital, uh, sorry, a hotel room near the ravine and therefore her immediately her reactions uh, were calmed, were reduced. So what do you have to say for Ontarians such as her who are now thinking of medically assisted death as an alternative to not being able to find a housing that's affordable to rent outside of the city even in the country? So I mean, it's heartbreaking. So what do you have to say about that story? It is absolutely heartbreaking and it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, we have had governments that have uh, allowed rents to increase to the point where people can't afford to live in our province anymore. Uh, people who have disabilities, who have medical needs that aren't being addressed should never, ever have to look at, uh, at the medically assisted uh, you know, death cut process. It's, it's, it's almost unbelievable that that's where things have gotten to in this province. We've, we've gone back and forth. With, with governments that have refused to take seriously uh, the, the rent control issues that we have, that the fact that people are getting uh, increases in rents from 10, 20, 30 uh, percent, and that, and that bad apple landlords are the ones that are evicting people so that they can make a renovation, make a repair, and then jack up the rent by two or three times the previous rent. It's completely unaffordable to live in this province and, and that's why we want to make that change. We want to bring back the rent control system. We want to make sure that people uh, like the woman you're talking about are able to get the medical help that they need. We need more affordable housing, more supportive housing to help people who are suffering, uh, who are maybe with mental health problems, maybe with addictions, uh, maybe needing some medical supports to be able to get through everyday life. We can provide those things in Ontario. We absolutely can. 
but they have to be a priority of the government, and they certainly are my priority. Not, not to uh, a government or a, a premier that's you know prioritizing his buddies, but a, a premier that prioritizes everyday people. And you were the first to uh, release your election platform. And, uh, and traditionally, we've seen this in different levels of government. The Liberals will wait after the NDP, and then they'll launch their election platform that has almost the same ideas, very similar. And uh, for the voter base, they get a bit you know, confused in terms of who's going to be able to address those needs and provide the aid that's necessary in the, in the election platform. So in this election, how do you see the NDP differentiating itself from the Liberals? And, and, and I know specifically from the PCs, you've you know, held opposition for four years and you've differentiated yourself. But in terms of the Liberals with the new uh, leader, Del Duca. Well, no matter what Mr. Del Duca and the Liberals say now, they had 15 years to make life better for folks. They had 15 years to put rent controls back in place in Ontario. They had 15 years to build affordable housing. And that's just one of the topics. Uh, a lot of the things that are broken that, I'm, that we're talking about, that we're hearing people talk to us about, like the housing crisis, like the health care uh, staffing crisis, like the mess in long-term care that took so many precious lives during COVID. These things were a problem before, they were a problem before Doug Ford got elected. Absolutely, Doug Ford made things worse. But no matter what the Liberals say now, they didn't prioritize these things. They didn't do what they should have done to prioritize what matters most to people. And, and that's why, uh, why things are as bad as they are today. And uh, last week, the Ontario government tabled their budget. It was one of the biggest spend, $199 billion.
You've watched Andrew Horvath, the leader of the NDP. That was her uh, first exclusive interview with any media, and that was with us. And uh, she answered questions about what she's looking to accomplish in this election. She's been leader since 2009. That's 13 years being the leader of the NDP. This is her fourth election. So this is an important election for her to be able to go from her 40 seats that she was able to win to become the official opposition in 2018. And she's vying for the top job as premier. Uh, essentially, the last time the NDP ever took government in Ontario was the Bob Ray government in 1990, and that was with a 37 percent vote in the election. So this is uh, a time for Andrew Horvath to try her best, as a lot of people believe that this might be her last election if she's not able to secure the top job. Please tune in on Y Media. We are covering all the election updates. We're on the ground at many campaign launches, as well as interviews with the leaders. Uh, catch us on Radio Y, as well as Channel Y, Y Media, a midweek newspaper that is distributed throughout the GTA, as well as SouthAsianDaily.com the online portal where you can watch all the videos live, all the shows live, as well as listen to the radio and catch all the latest headlines, as well as on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube at Y Media. I'm Ramona Singh, and this was an exclusive interview with Andrew Horvath on the first day of the election campaign.